Hello everyone, it's Eddie the Chump, come back with another video. This is episode 2 of uh, my Living with Depression series. Um, I've just, what I thought would be a good idea was for me to watch the previous video and then record straight away. I've got some notes anyway. Um, first off, I want to thank everyone for their like really strong um, reaction to the videos. It's been profoundly positive um, and I'm grateful for that. And, you know, although I am obviously sorry that there are people that go through the same thing, uh, I'm glad that on on some level, uh, someone else talking about this is in any way cathartic. Um, I don't know. If, well, I I know it's definitely not as cathartic as you know therapy would be, but it just just talking about these things that are sort of somewhat taboo, especially mental health, seems to be of benefit. So I'm going to carry on doing that. Um, the one thing that I really got from watching the first video was that there are so many details to unpack. It's such a weighty subject and to break it down into five or six minute videos, uh, it's going to require a few episodes. And I knew that when I started it, but I didn't, you know, when I, f when I did that first episode, I didn't really envisage, I didn't really have a script. I don't, if uh, you don't know that, like I have notes, but I don't make my videos with a script. I don't write it. Say, for example, it's not as formal as that. It's just, you know, I have a strong coffee and I riff and I go. Um, so today, you know, my thinking of watching the first video and thinking about it, I think it's important to talk about uh, some of the circumstances and some of the things that I did that I, I can now admit were definitely not constructive when I started to become ill, when I started to get, uh, suffer from really badly from depression. Um, and, you know, a big one of those is to do with the fact that I spent a lot of my time trying to deny uh, that I'm actually a very sensitive person. Um, I, I'm, I'm open with it now, obviously, as fans of the channel will know. Um, but for years and years and years, I tried to sort of push my feelings down. Um, incredibly, not not highly strung, that's the wrong word, but I, t I feel a lot, actually. And it's not a question of not feeling for me. It's a question of feeling a lot. A lot of things upset me. You know, a lot of the injustices of the world, which I'll get onto on another episode, how uh, how I trapped myself with my own thoughts and how they isolated me from other people, which is a really big cause of depression in a lot of people. It seems to be a very common thing of, like, uh, white males in their 20s. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a recurring thing. It's a cliche, even. It could be seen as one. Um, but, yeah, uh, I will talk about this specifically. I... Being very sensitive, I didn't do myself any favours by um, indulging in substance abuse. Now, whether that be alcohol or drugs, um, of which I did, um, and I don't, I don't feel shame in admitting that. Um, there were some experiences that that were positive that helped shape my mentality and my empathy. Actually, enhanced my empathy, made me more compassionate um, but there were also experiences that really didn't help me and being if you're one of those sensitive people if you're listening or watching this video and you find yourself suffering from mood swings or you're a te I mean teenagers get mood swings anyway but if you're slightly older um, my biggest recommendation is especially even things like caffeine you know like coffee like really strong coffee this is one of my favorite things but I have to be really wary how and when I do that to myself. These substances that are sort of mood changing, that get you fired up or change your adrenaline or whatever, stuff like that, they can be really, really powerful. And we kind of take them anecdotally and superficially in our lives. We drink a lot of coffee and tea, we drink Coca-Cola, you know, we take recreational drugs, all that kind of, I'm not condoning that at all, but uh, we do a lot of things to ourselves without really thinking about the consequences and that's kind of a cliche but I really didn't at the time when I was really unhappy and if you're you know say for example it's it's a fairly unpopular opinion but if you're of the disposition where you're sensitive and you think a lot about stuff and you're introspective or you have an introspective streak let's say I, I would say that I'm actually an extrovert but I do have an introverted streak where I can retreat within myself when I'm thinking about something deeply drugs like you know weed or something like that that make drugs like that make you hyper aware it's like a different form of awareness you become hyper aware of all the minuscule details that's not good <laughs> in my experience that's not good for people who think a lot and it's no surprise that to me you know a lot of what you know makes people really ill if they smoke too much weed is the fact that is that hyper awareness and and that's kind of the bigger 
message of today's episode was the one thing I took from the previous one. The one thing that I really want to get across to you is that depression is a manifestation of one's inability to change perspective, right? So I became trapped by my own mind and started to view the world a particular way. And I was so convinced of my own rightness in the way that I perceived the world in a negative way, you know, so that there was no hope of doing anything cool ever again. There was no such thing as love. It was also, I was extremely cynical and I was utterly convinced that my worldview was totally correct. And it was that lack of dexterity when it came to um, being able to change my perspective from the long term to the short term, from the personal to the impersonal, to from the sensitive to the insensitive, all those things. My, my lack of ability to do that made me worse and substances, even things like caffeine, uh, contributed to that because they they control your moods. That's, we manage ourselves, that's how we do it. We, you know, even if you don't take, you know, illicit drugs, everyone manages themselves. Um, so that's the kind of quick fire second episode. I'm going to try and make these videos about six or seven minutes because I know that people's attention spans, uh, there's no slight on people who watch my videos at all, mine's about the same. I want to keep you interested and I want you to carry on watching. So that was the second episode. Um, yeah, all the social media, go to my channel, subscribe, that would be great. Uh, I really hope you like this video. Uh, I'm really enjoying doing it.